In this video, we're going to look at the spectral decomposition, sometimes called the eigen decomposition, of a symmetric matrix. And here, I'm going to assume you're familiar with vector spaces. So the theorem is X is an n by n symmetric matrix, then there exists an orthogonal matrix P, such that this matrix product is a diagonal matrix where the, the diagonal elements are the eigenvalues of X. Now the proof of this is if we let VI be the orthogonal set of orthonormal set of vectors of X corresponding to each eigenvalue and we let P, P be this matrix of eigenvalues. So this is an n by n matrix. Then PXP is, well this is the transpose of, of the eigenvectors and this is just X and this is the eigenvectors that we defined here. Um, now we multiply this into each one of those, but since it's an eigenvector, then this is the eigenvalue times the eigenvector for each one of those. And then when we multiply this out, you know, you take the first one times this, the first time, you know, and you get that row. And then you do that for each element, and then you get this matrix. But these are orthonormal eigenvectors. So when, when it's dotted with itself, then it's 1. If it's dotted with any other vector, it's 0. So all the off-diagonal elements go to 0. And we're left with just the eigenvalues down the diagonal, which is can be represented like this, diagonal of i, um, lambda i, from i equals 1 to n. And that's the proof of the spectral decomposition theorem. Now, some more to that. Why is it called the spectral decomposition? Well, this is my take. The spectrum of a matrix is the unique eigenvalues of that matrix X. And on a side note, I have a video called uh, Gersh-Gorin Circle Theorem a brief series on eigenvalue inequalities which gives a very cool way to find regions for these eigenvalues without having to do much analysis. Okay. But when in mathematics spectral analysis in mathematics deals with eigenvalues and eigenvectors and so when we say the spectral decomposition, then we are taking a matrix and decomposing it or representing it with the eigenvectors and eigenvalues. And so that's why I think it's called a, a spectral decomposition. But more on this. Um, in, in what I show you next, the, we're going to reference a video I put out called a per, per, perpendicular projection matrix. Okay. And here we're going to look, uh, it's a definition really of what's called an eigenprojection. And it's represented like this. It's the eigenprojection of matrix X corresponding to eigenvalue lambda. So if we let X be an M by N matrix with eigenvalue lambda with multiplicity R. So, you know, a lot of times the eigenvalues are the same. And when they're and how many times it's the same is called the multiplicity. And we're going to let that represent by R. And then whatever number R is, then there's eigenvectors associated with that number. So there's going to be we can create R orthonormal eigenvectors associated with the multiplicity of this uh eigenvalue. And we're going to let this uh, matrix be O, which stands for orthonormal uh, eigenvectors corresponding to lambda. Now then, if we, we're going to let this notation be O, O prime. And O are these orthonormal eigenvectors. And then when you do the matrix multiplication, you get this. Well, this 
um, this right here, the OO prime, is a unique projection matrix onto the column space of O, represented as C of O, which is a vector space, um, S of X of lambda, which is called the eigenspace of X corresponding to lambda. Now, the uh, projection matrix and the fact that it's unique is given in this video. There's a proof of that. Okay, But we're going to need this for page 3. And page 3, to me, I think is pretty cool. It's pretty neat. It's a different way to think about the, uh, I, the spectral decomposition. So this is an illustration. So let's let X be an n by n symmetric matrix with eigenvalues lambda 1 through lambda n and eigenvectors v1 through vn. Then by the spectral decomposition theorem, X can be represented as P, D, P prime, where P are the orthonormal eigenvectors associated with uh, X. And D is the diagonal matrix with uh, the eigenvalues down it. So now, now some of these eigenvalues, lambda I here, um, they're not all going to be unique. They may be, but the problem, you know, maybe not. And so what we want to do is kind of regroup these. And we're going to call them delta 1 through delta k. And these are just the unique elements in this. And, and so the deltas are the unique eigenvalues with multiplicity r. So r1 how, how, is how many times this is duplicated through, you know, RK is, is how many times this is repeated. So now let's look at this uh, de spectral decomposition here. So PD prime is can be represented like this. So P of course is the eigenvectors. D is the diagonal matrix with the eigenvalues here. And then this is the course P prime. And then when you do that matrix multiplication you end up with this. And, and VI, VI prime, is actually a matrix. So there's N matrices here. You're, you're adding N matrices that actually equals the original matrix X. And to me, that's kind of interesting to think about. And so when, I'm, when we expand this sum, we get this. And so here you can kind of tell that it's N matrices added together to get the original. Um, but a note here, each of these terms are not unique because the orthonormal set of vectors is not unique. So each term is not unique. But let's, let's regroup the terms in a strategic way. And each of these eigenvectors, you know, some of them have a multiplicity. So some of them are the same. And so, for instance, if lambda 1 and lambda 2 were equal, we could call that delta 1, right? So, to regroup these, we're going to regroup them based on this. So now, if we, so this is delta 1, both of those, and if we factor that out, then we get V1, V1 prime plus V2, V2 prime. So, that is this right here. So, delta 1. And then, of course, when you do this matrix multiplication, you get this back. And then assume that the next three eigenvalues are the same, and we'd call that delta 2. And then that corresponds to the vectors, you know, V3, 4, and 5. And then you do the, you know, the matrix multiplication, get it back. And then maybe the third, you know, this eigenvalue is unique, so it's just by itself, and it and you carry along that eigenvector, and you do this for the remaining ones, and then I assume the last term is unique because I was running out of room, so that's delta k, vk, vk prime. Now, what is so cool about this? These these are orthonormal vectors, right? And when you take that dotted with the itself comp you know the transpose of itself that actually ends up being a projection matrix back onto the column space of what the original was and that's how we define these eigen projections right so 
here there's there's two vectors and that eigen projector actually it's unique projection matrix onto v1 and v2 and then uh the px delta of two is the unique projection matrix back onto this column space and and so forth so now we can represent the spectral decomposition in terms of these k these k matrices these k terms and each one of them is unique right because the deltas are unique and the projection matrices are unique because they project back onto this column space in that in a unique way and then of course then this sum can be represented like this where k is the number of unique eigenvalues that we have well that's all i have for today hope you enjoyed that i sure did uh, please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.